Hi guys, my name is Borodante and welcome back to Overpaint. Which means I go to my Patreon page and check out as many of your guys' submissions as possible, trying to give you some advice and maybe fix something. Right after a word from this channel's sponsor Wingfox, of course. The Medieval Maiden is a course that covers drawing a 2D vintage-style female character. This course is very interesting with its popular art style, as well as the fact that mostly you will be using Procreate to develop the artwork. The lecturer shares her experience in coloring and will explain some of the key points in color combination. The course covers conception, sketching, coloring and refining, as well as lighting, shading and high level of composition. And since this course was created with beginners in mind, everything will be covered and explained in detail. This new tutorial has a special event, so the first 500 purchases will cost only $9 and the first 1000 purchases will be $19. So if you're interested, make sure not to miss out on these cool offers and check the affiliate link in the description, where you'll also find an extra discount code. Also, a new Cherry Blossom Festival event on Wingfox will give you 25% discount for any course with a new code that you can find below. Now I have quite a few submissions collected this time, a whopping 9 of them, so I'll try to just go through all of these submissions in a quicker fashion and it will be like a little bit of a challenge. How much can I really improve a picture with like a very limited amount of time? Actually fixing stuff that really needs fixing and there's that. First patient. Sloppy Swish. Hello Sloppy Swish. What's up Boro? Been a fan of yours for a while now and the insight and inspiration I get from your channel is constantly driving me to continue practicing art and digital painting. And this is the most recent artwork I'd say I've completed, although I could probably keep coming back to tweak it forever. Don't have any specific issues, but I feel like I can't seem to nail down the right level of contrast detail overall and the whole image feels kind of flat, lifeless to me. Would love to hear your thoughts and see how do you improve this bird hydra beast. Alrighty then. I like the words flat lifeless. That That's a good way to put it. Aside from my favorite fix of giving more space around the character, like this is so, so unpleasant that the wing ends right at the edge of the canvas and this is also too close, so we can make it bigger. But aside from that, my main issue with the picture is actually, well, it's literally a figurine. You rendered it and positioned it as a figurine. It's sitting on a table with nothing going on. There's just one big soft light on it. It's not like a sunlight, it's not an overcast lighting, it's from one angle, like a big table lamp is lighting up the, this figurine. Also, it's supposed to be a big creature, but we're looking at it like the horizon is somewhere around here, so we're just looking at the figurine. That's the main issue. Aside from that, it's a beautiful picture, but it's just a picture of a figurine. All these decisions just make it look like a figurine. So yeah, that's what I have to say, but let's see what I can do about it quickly, uh, trying to like edit it into something appropriate. I wonder if this will work out. I mean, obviously I'll need to edit a lot more than just this. So I'm adding some kind of a location. Let's say there is a bright sunlight spot where the actual Hydra is. And I'll try to make it a bit more like sunlight. But for that really you need to just have sharper shadows from the character on the character and a bit of a like stronger shading in here as well. Like the sun is a pretty small light source, like a small dot, so it doesn't really light up from a lot of angles. It's just from one side and then that's it. So you see a much more of a sharp edges exposing these textures of scales and all that. So a lot more of this should be going on. And also why not add an actual shadow from the head on its own neck. In the back let's show a little bit of a destroyed town, I don't know. A shadow from the redhead, redhead, onto the wing. So let's say it's a bit closer to us than the wing. The clouds, you know, you should show the world. Show something for scale, so we can see an actual, I don't know, little tower and like red roofs of the buildings in this place. 
uh, smoke uh, or dust, whatever it would be, a little bit like that. Also, it should be big scale dust, meaning a lot more forming like clouds, like literally when you see clouds, only gray and low. <laughs> It will form specific like round shapes something you don't see when you're visualizing smaller objects because that cloud you will just see that part of it it's not gonna form anything in there but when an object is bigger you see these high scale epic dust clouds whatever and yeah, mostly it's about the lighting in this case. And yeah, I tried to like lower the horizon, then also made it higher in here. So let's fix that a bit. And yeah, by the way, um, I'm kind of rendering sun while the sky is obviously overcast, really. But I just decided to go with a more complex scenario. If it's overcast, you just render the same lighting the thing had initially. It's just not from this side, but literally from the top. So you render anything that looks upwards brighter. It needs to like be actively lit from the top mostly, but also kind of flat. So don't neglect, don't darken the sides too much. Well, I mean, I think I got the difference in the the way the character feels. But yeah, my advice is kind of like restarting the painting and approaching most of the heads. Like the fact that everything like this hat is perfectly from the side. This one is a little bit even from the top. This hat is also from the top. Is this creature bigger than a human or not? If it's bigger than, well, the top hat needs to be like more like this angle. So you would go with that kind of scenario or that's a weird angle, but you get the point. So you show the chin at the bottom mostly. So yeah, something like that. Obviously more and more details all over the place will help, but if you just wanna show the character like isolated concept art, not necessarily do all that, just do some clouds, maybe just foreground, couple of strokes of the, like showing that this is a lot of land. And yeah, important part is to get the proper outdoors lighting because nothing this big can be lit with a super soft light from one side. That's like a studio lighting, a human scale, human or smaller. So this thing needs like natural lighting and, and that's a big deal. Lighting shows a lot of context of where things are. Some aerial perspective on the, the third head in the back to show that the distance between the hats is actually a lot of air. So a little bit like not perfect black on it, a little bit dusted like that gives some idea about the distance. So there's that. Next patient. Oh wow, this is one of my artworks remade by Rola Denkoinik. Nailed it. Hey Boro. Hello there, I hope you are doing well. My neck hurts, but everything else is fine. I did a study from one of your older videos and I have to say that was the best practice I could have ever taken. Seeing you work and explain is certainly something really cool and whenever you put down a color, it's explained so well that everyone can easily adapt the knowledge you have. With that being said, I hope you enjoy the study of your artwork. Stay safe and healthy. I do enjoy it. Really well done. I really like what you did in here. I like the, the fuzzier reflection closer to the center of the ball right here. This is an interesting aspect of Fresnel effect as well that like if this material is not perfect, like even if it's a chrome kind of metal, for instance, it's still maybe like dusty, dirty or scratched. And at a big angle, those scratches won't show up because everything just becomes as one surface and working a lot more like a perfect mirror but closer to the center you can see all kinds of stuff that's why the roughness may increase in here so that's really cool looking something about the fact that it's getting blurrier in the center looks really cool about this ball and yeah overall really cool brushwork and everything you really nailed my approach with um, creating these uh, clouds of dust and whatever is going on in here I don't remember it was full improv but yeah great stuff 
Lowstar did his version of the possessed basketball. Really cool. I really like the tongue specifically. And a lot of like goopy spit. I didn't do too much about spit in my version. This one looks a lot more moist and that's really awesome. Also the scale of the bumps on the basketball. They're a bit closer to truth. A bit bigger than normal but that's like if you are gonna exaggerate something that's the way to exaggerate. In my case it was almost just not really bumps at all so this is looking much better hey bro hello low star what an awesome exercise this was speaking of exercise have you played beat saber on the quest 2 yet yeah that was the first thing i played <sighs> the game is fine if you play it without sound <laughs> that's my review of it it's really fun fun mechanics but the music is pure garbage Anyway, this is the cursed basketball I did after being inspired and prompted to do so from your YouTube video. It was so satisfying, like landing double S rank for the first time on a Beat Saber track that's been whooping your butt all night. Sponsored by Beat Saber. You have my undying appreciation of all the game-changing knowledge you share. Yeah, it's me again, Lowstar. Thanks, Lowstar. Really heartwarming words and really cool to have you around, trying different stuff, improving a lot. Really cool. And finally, an actual submission for Overpain from the same Rola Denkoenig that posted the study of my work. Hi Boro, I have been silently watching your content for a long time now and enjoying every last bit of it. I really like my messy brushwork in that state that is shaping everything. However, I'm doing digital art for about six years now, yet I feel like I am missing some fundamental skills in lighting and perspective. This is my most recent landscape artwork I have done and it turned out pretty fine, but yet these fundamental errors are shining through. Another thing I struggle with is to make empty surfaces look more appealing and interesting. Also, I really love to paint in grayscale because I can solely focus on the values. Alright, let's see what I can do. Okay, I like the most of it. Indeed, there are some questions about the perspective and lighting. Number one, all the action happening exactly on the horizon line. That's kind of weird. How about we continue the action? At least, like, it shouldn't be something crazy at all. In many cases, the horizon is really flat, especially with the location we have in here. But just showing this already gives us a much better understanding of what's going on. And maybe some intense, like a very sharp line of lighting would make sense since we do have some kind of dynamic lighting with lots of shadows from the clouds. Also, a little bit lighting up the sky closer to the horizon also makes sense. That's the way aerial perspective works. Also, in here is just that it, it feels like this perfect line. We can kind of hide it a little bit. If it's that far away that it actually looks like a flat line, that means maybe there is something on the ground that may overlap on top of it. So kind of hiding that perfect edge in at least some places. That would just look better, you know? Another thing that's bothering me is this puddle. I assume this is like a puddle. Anyway, the details on the ground. They literally need to scale up as they get closer to us. And they don't seem to do that. And that's one of those things that I noticed when I was like trying to paint a landscape some time ago. A lot of time ago, I don't usually do it. But I noticed like when I look at a work of awesome professionals that do landscapes, they make sure that details really scale up. It's really important for the feeling of perspective. So this is not even close to enough, actually. It needs to be like crazy strong. So uh, scaling it won't really help that much. I would say I'm gonna do this and I'll just literally do it like this. Usually they switch to super dynamic shapes when it gets closer to us like this. And and fight the temptation of introducing any like more dense details than this. The logics behind it is that if we would be like say over there, it would look like this. So it has to scale up. You may introduce like 
other types of details maybe mostly what i would do like obviously it's really asking for it now since we have such awesome place for i assume a reflection is um yeah doing some of those clouds uh, reflections here kind of like that maybe and i'll just use an eraser and now we're on the actual ground that is getting a lot closer to us this really feels like far away now that that guy over there so yeah i think this is like the legit improvement here and not cutting away the horizon like that immediately at the main object of the scene is also a really good idea showing that the world doesn't end and I guess one last thing is a little bit about the design of these clouds and uh, whatever. Uh, it feels like these are a bit too rep repetitive. I hate that word and I use it so much. Repetitive shapes of the clouds. So maybe think of a little bit adding some kind of variety to them. Uh, you have a much sharper quality to your brush and I can't really repeat that in Krita. That's one problem I have with Krita if you use a textured brush. You can either make it that it will just be eaten away too much, like there is no height mode because no one knows the formula. <laughs> I know how that happened. A lot of apps have this height mode for textures. Didn't know it's not common knowledge or something. It's kind of a weird thing. But yeah, because of that, the texture is kind of like always sort of soft. Anyway, I'm just saying that that's why my brush strokes don't fit in that well. One thing I'm fixing, like the last thing probably, is that the cloud initially like was dancing too much around this mountain right here and kind of happening the same thing in here like I assume this cloud is a lot further away like it's not touching the cloud but this happens because well it's on the same canvas and like this is a mistake it feels like they sort of bleed one over another so make sure that it doesn't necessarily happen show that things actually go beyond ignoring the fact that there was this mountain you know prove that they don't touch each other then it will feel more correct it requires more more of an accurate brushwork next to the um colliding edges i don't know something like that instead of this we have this well this reflection is now stealing all the thunder maybe it wasn't exactly what you would want but looks kind of cool you can tone down like take advantage of again the Fresnel effect and well the angle of the water gets more and more towards us as it gets closer to us so it can get less reflective at the bottom you know you can introduce some of that naturally occurring vignetting like that so there's that next patient oh wow this looks like a photo study James Carney hi James hi Borrow. I wanted to say I'm a big fan of overpaint so am I it's a lot of fun in all its forms I'm attaching a portrait of my daughter's little Pomeranian if you'd consider Pom Pom for overpaint the original photo image was him lying down in this pose so I had to rotate the pose I added the stool and background to be similar to maybe going to get your photo taken I see like a studio photo mm-hmm just kind of neutral bluish background all right then let's see um i mean the origins of the pose are asking for a disaster <laughs> like it's a laying down photo and then but honestly it's kind of working out pretty well i think oh yeah you can't increase the canvas with crop tool and credit oh i know i'll just scale it up scale it up and then shrink it down so yeah i just want to add that <laughs> you know the rule of thirds and everything so let's say let's um have the main face point at the rule of thirds you know so it's is there that feels more satisfying i have no idea about the anatomy of the dog or of any dog really so don't pay attention to anatomy pay attention to the good stuff uh seems like the ears are pretty small on this this cute little creature so let's make uh like that i guess although it's really giving away the laying down pose i guess 
So anyway, um, the main thing I wanted to change is the gradient of the background, maybe, and the perspective of this, uh, this, this chair right here. So it should probably be a bit more like that. Like usually for a painting, you would choose a picture that's, you know, when you take it from a certain distance while zooming in. So the focal length wouldn't distort things too much. And that's why usually in like good paintings and photos, you don't have to deal with, you know, this kind of strong perspective of a chair that starts here and ends somewhere over there. That's like a lot, like we are inside of this chair universe. <laughs> Usually if it would be, the picture would be taken from further away, we would have like this leg being here, another leg being here or something, and the chair would be like that, you know? And it would be a much nicer thing to deal with. This is important. This is the kind of things that you think like, Ugh, why is it so ugly? How does like a professional artist deal? Like how do they visualize this perspective? Why is it looking so blank and unfortunate? That's because of the wrong focal length. It's just the wrong angle at things. Not that it's impossible. It just has nothing to do with being a painting. <laughs> Like, not a disaster, but it will always lose to a picture that has a much bigger focal length with, like, zooming in. Whenever you zoom in, it's always a much better painting material. In the older times, when painting was invented, everything was painted w pretty much isometrically. Th they only figured out actual real perspective surprisingly late in history. <laughs> a lot of things, like medieval paintings, they're just garbage in terms of perspective and everything and after they figured it out they still like you don't see a lot of paintings where someone's pointing forward that the hand would be bigger than the head it's still it's gonna look like this like if you're looking from very big distance and it looks better as a painting this looks like a random picture taken with the phone. <laughs> that's that's like a difference. So yeah, one thing I'm fixing right now as I'm criticizing your perspective is I'm trying to make this gradient of the background a bit more natural and less, you know, around the shape of the dog. So in here it was like this really intense, almost nuclear glow and the whole gradient of the background is from that glow. It's like the dog is lighting up the background a little bit so I'm fixing that and I'm imagining there's like a big like soft box in here and it's lighting up the popper and the background behind it nice and smooth so no shape starts or ends at the edge like at the silhouette of the dog on the background it's all naturally falling down just look for this light spot and it's getting brighter at this area, like kinda like that. So it's falling away like that. And that has nothing to do with the edges of the dog. Uh, another thing, I know, apparently, since it was upside down, uh, there was um, a ceiling light or something in the back, and this is a strong rim light on the dog. In our case, we need a light from the front a bit more and it shouldn't be like all that white because that white was more of a reflection than anything so it would be in here but of course it, it, it all points at the fact that this is not that good of a reference <laughs> like you need to come up with what the lighting would be and i guess a good reference in this sense would actually tell you what the light is so yeah i'm just it's the same thing as i imagined this gradient in here like this i'm imagining this kind of you know gradient on the shape of the dog as well so i have this round shape and uh, this is it's lighting then whatever this turkey leg shape and there's also lighting like my dog anatomy knowledge but and yeah some fading in here and here it will be like a bit more like that because this uh, back part is not really facing the light anymore so these just are the basic gradients that i'm trying to show maybe a little bit of the shaded part in this armpit of the dog 
Also, I really, really don't know what the length of the fur on this dog is. Even close, like in here it's kind of longer, but in here it's almost like a, this super low carpet thing. So I just do whatever I want. <laughs> Apparently it's like very fluffy and you've been seeing a lot of hairs pointing at you like that, you know? I guess that would introduce some of the, um, like, an edge in here that would be um, already facing away from the light source a little bit or something. Also, I wouldn't make that strong of a gradient too, it feels a bit too intense. How about we don't go that dark on those edges? So yeah, something like that. I guess the main thing to work on is introducing the actual three-dimensional shading. You know, the dog has any mammal, has somewhat of a round shapes, so it, it makes sense to shade it more round, you know? And yeah, since the light is on this side, that side should be darker, showing some consistency with that lighting. And just a lot more time actually looking at the way the fur looks like in the actual original. And working with that. The main improvement I like the most in here is probably the change in the gradient, because in here it was so intense it didn't feel like, you know, a nice looking casual context, and this softer and lighter gradient is looking much nicer. Next patient! Ooh, that's a, that's a huge composition, I wonder what I'll improve here. <laughs> Hi again, Lowstar. Congratulations again on an awesome finish to your Black Widow. I didn't finish it. This piece was my last commission. I think I've absorbed some of the lessons from last time. They're an Altmer who is all sweaty and dirty and a Dunmer companion looking at him worriedly. Okay? Racist. <laughs> Their names are Faye and Valdes and are original characters from the Elder Scrolls Online universe. I thought so. Their location is somewhere on the backside outskirts of Balmora, a city in Morrowind. Alright, I kinda like almost everything about it. Well, generally, um, the brushwork and the shading on things could use more precision, I guess, but that just comes with time or something. One thing that's kind of confusing me, is this character a lot shorter or what? Like somewhere over there is the horizon line, even if it's there maybe. And that's all I need to say, like there, that's their difference in height, literally. Even though this character is like leaning, if they would stand up, they would be kind of like that. Anyway, I think I just want to make this character a bit higher. Not bigger or anything, it's fine that they're like, uh, this guy is just further away, totally makes sense and whatever. Yeah, I'm just liking it so much. I almost have nothing educated to say about it. <laughs> like, there is much more dialogue between these two now. Before that, it felt like he was just falling down somewhere. It, w it was kind of weird. Now, another one thing I would maybe fix is add more dedication to the lighting of this location. One thing I'd start with is the fact that we have this very convenient lighting on the face, but not on the shirt, and it's kind of weird. So I would make it just an actual light source, whatever it is, it's just lighting up, I don't know what, why it's so orange in here. So yeah, that's the thing, right? When you render a face, you want to have that extra light on it. But don't forget about the rest of the character, because it's some kind of light source that's for whatever reason, conveniently lighting up the character from the front. As you can see, like, it's not nearly as bright as that light from the back and everything, so we're not going that crazy with it. But it should happen. And yeah, on this stuff as well. And I feel like I wanna, you know, darken some of the grass, for instance, underneath the mushroom. Cause it's a big mushroom, it's casting a shadow, you know? Uh, same, like, th the characters are standing under this big mushroom, so maybe the ground right next to them should also get that, you know? So we would feel like, oh, so there's that bright background, but our characters are standing under something that's casting shadow on them. So we're like in this place now. I can see this darker grass right here, it was telling that already. 
mom's spaghetti but the ground wasn't following it and it was kind of weird like really dark grass but the ground is all flat no events on this grass it's just even thing nothing should stay even especially if it's like it's traveling a lot here this is like a huge distance so a lot of things can go on in there you know i mean throw a rock in there <laughs> it deserves a rock it, it traveled a lot maybe another rock somewhere over there i don't know it's not even a fix you you, you can do this without rocks <laughs> i just don't like flat grounds okay as i discovered last year in outlandish curiosity the ground doesn't really look like that especially with giant things with uh, whatever this is growing on it and everything it dies away the new thing grows in its stead so there's a lot of dead orange looking leaves and branches falling all over the place just adding a little bit of those on the edges of the road will immediately look much more interesting. You see? I'm adding orange spots. It immediately feels like, aha, uh -huh, that's, that's something cool. That's something that happens. Unlike this weird stone I did. Okay, maybe uh, one thing now is that the world is getting really bright in there, in the bag, but this... This bridge, it may be really important or whatever, this is the bridge of Narnia or something. But like this, I think it's still important, but it fits in a bit better. I can see there's like a shadow from this mushroom onto this mushroom, which is really cool. I'm just maybe changing its shape a bit. Some more of a like expressive shape of the stem of these mushrooms. You know, it felt like it was barely existing and now we're like, yeah mushroom stem it has like a thing it's holding itself or whatever the telling shapes and same thing could go in here and even in here like they're a bit too flat and nothing's going on on them i get that maybe they look like that in um elder scrolls online but that's a that's an old game i never played it i just i'm just saying trash you know characters also don't look like that i bet so there you go. One extra thing I would change is I don't really see the reason for the stem of this main mushroom right here, like the closest mushroom, to get like pitch black. What's up with that? Is there some text placement in here or something uh, for the client? I don't know, but it shouldn't be pitch black. It looks really weird. And actually one last thing I promise is uh, the, the sky right here feels like it doesn't deserve to be that dark. Like let the sky and everything about that being bright. It's a sky, come on. So yeah, there we go. All right, let's cut this giant overpane here and you guys can look forward to the second half this Thursday. Bye.